Hello. Hey. So I picked the episode already. Looks like we're going to be reviewing D11 in the N++ tab. Uh, alright, so it looks like we got shots fired, cough and nails, light timer, max float, and probability 1 in 10 million. So, first we got shots fired. This level was interesting, because, let's see, there's a lot of ways to jump over a couple of pillars, and the ending is interesting because you have to do a very big leap towards the end. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of ways to time your jumps so that you hit the goal differently, but then it changes how you're going to where you're going to position your last jump when you get back. And there's also the toggle lines for the challenge where you actually have to go into the chambers with the Goss turrets. In I was order a big to get fan over of that on this one. That was nice. That was a nice change of pace. Because before you'd completely ignore it, but now you actually have to go back and, you know, through all those tunnels. Right. And by the I I am actually playing it right now. <laughs> so I, am I. I just... Yeah. I'm just commenting on it as I go through it again. Oh, you can. There's a place you can triple in every single one of these. That's interesting. It's completely useless for the high school route. Oh yeah. But I suppose it's just sort of there. Feels just if like if you want to. Feels like that's meant to make it easier so that you can perp off of the sideways slanting uh, slope so you can get over the golds, but I'm not actually sure if that makes it easier at all. Yeah, the... I think the way that I got over the gold was by, uh... Well, got over the gold when I'm going to the right, is by going down into one and doing a, uh, two jumps off of the slope with the second one being a perp. I find yeah, that okay. really easy. And I just did both of the challenges again. That was enjoyable. Easy. Yeah. Of course. Right in the middle. Okay. It can be fun doing these challenges again. Oh, look, Eddie stole the zero on this one. <laughs> <laughs> of course he did. And uh, Borlid and JP were tied on this one before Eddie decided to, of course, take it by three whole frames. <laughs> oh, Eddie. <laughs> How does he keep doing this, man? He's... he's something else. <laughs> oh. That is a weird trick. He does a very strange trick at the beginning, where he sort of corners forward on the first slope he jumps onto, and then bumps up on the next one. Does that actually save him some time? It might. Oh, and he... huh. I just noticed he barely makes it to the ending. <laughs> It must actually be the first place that he can hit it, possibly? Hit the door? Interesting. Yeah, that is close. Hmm. Huh. Are we good? Uh, yeah, I think we're good. I don't know if there's right. a whole lot else to say here. It's a pretty fun level, I think. Mm -hmm. So moving on to Coffin Nails. This is an extremely memorable level, even though it's really short. Yeah. Yeah, the, the the simple drone wave here just makes it stand out around the rest of the levels in the general area. Oh, yeah. I, I definitely remember that. this. Oh, yeah, and the G minus minus is definitely challenging. Uh, it has a lot of corner jumps involved that I'm now noticing. There's a lot of cornering involved in this challenge. Does and, it? And you kind of have to... You have to keep up with the drone. Oh, wait! You can just go underneath it. I was about to say, I don't like this challenge because of how tedious it is. And then you said that, and I I never even thought about going over it. I didn't even realize you could go under it. <laughs> okay, cool. I guess I just beat this way more difficult than I was supposed to. I kind of want to try this challenge by going over the top, because... 
I mean, like I said, I thought this one was super boring. Yeah, I'm. I just passed over the. T okay, wow. This that makes it a lot more interesting. I'm landing on the bottom, but I'm not actually going through the bottom. I'm using the bottom to stop, so that I could just corner over through it more. You pass through the drones a lot. That makes the challenge a lot more interesting. Anyways, yeah, I was really I was really lazy in high scoring this level. I just straight up went for the exit as fast as I could, then just collected all the gold as I got back. Yeah, that just that sounds like a, each time. a decent way to go for it. Uh, let's see how Xerath does it, which is also by Eddie, by, of course, five frames. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is an interesting... Oh, yeah. Jesus, those, those drones. That is a rough drone encounter. That must be what's keeping it from being taken again. I wonder if there's another way to jump through the gold like that. That might save some time. Oh, wait. I mean, there would only be one other way because of the pattern it has. So, I wonder... Hmm. Jump over the whole thing. And you run into the drone wave at the end. So, if you, you know, regardless of how fast you go, you always catch up to the drone wave if you're trying to high score this by using that route. It's keeping me from going too fast, which is interesting. Yeah, I think, I don't know if you listened to the episode where Muzz and I were talking about an episode, uh, mm -hmm. but we were talking at one point about how annoying it is to have to wait in this game, or at least how that's often the case, but... I like drone I th patterns like this, where you feel like you might be able to beat the drones if you do oh, it. Oh yeah! By the way, um, SUX six one, that level that just got maxed today. Yeah. Uh, that that is a good example of a level that utilizes needing to pause for a drone, but not actually waiting for it. Yeah. And that was pretty difficult. I noticed that I actually tried to get the max on that before, but didn't. But seeing that there was only two slots left, I was motivated to go take it. I'm trying to remember if I ever got on that one or if I got fed up and quit. Uh, nope. All right. Looks like I did get on it. Good. Neat. <laughs> well, I was thinking I really didn't like coffin nails, but now that I, now that I might try for the challenge a different way, I'll reevaluate the level. It could be more fun than I remember. <laughs> Also, of course, the nails look like they're supposed to be digging into the ground, which is a nice touch. Yeah. It's just kind of comforting looking like I'm supposed to be moving around the nails and just putting them right into the slot. And oh, God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, I just got nine. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, Cool. I swear to God, by the end of this episode, I'm just going to have every single top 20. <laughs> <laughs> so the next level, 1102, is Light Timer. Um, I have rem I did the challenge on this one four times because of save corruption. Oof. I did it one time and only recently, but I liked it pretty well. I'm I not going to lie. This is on, this is like s about two slots below prosumer tier. Yeah. I. Solely because you have to go really fast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with that. This is, this is a really hard one, but I don't. It's hard, but I didn't find it quite as annoying as prosumer. I Just guess it's because... uh, I think the reason why I didn't get fed up with this one, yeah. I didn't get fed up with this one, but the reason I didn't get fed up with this one, because corner jumps, and corner jumps are always more fun. Yeah, that's actually basically what I was going to say. I think it's slightly easier to get the gold and miss the mine if you're doing jumps off the corners here. It's easier to line yourself up right. 
Um, I'm pretty sure that I found it much easier to get the corner jumps by landing on the far side, so I would actually jump over the entire gold mine and just corner off of the back side to the next one. I'm... I think I did the same thing, but I don't remember. Str strangely, I think that would position my hitbox in such a way that it was much easier to actually collect the piece. I can see that, yeah. So yeah, I, I like this challenge a lot. I've heard a lot of people complain I, about it, but I really like it. It's just difficult. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm trying to high score this, and I notice that as I try to go the low route and then back on the high route, I encounter a cycle on the laser where I can try to hit the leftmost top platform. So it's a... actually not leftmost, but... Okay, if we're going from left to right, the third leftmost platform, you can try to hit that before the laser arrives at it. Yeah. And I'm actually finding that quite difficult without trying to collect the gold while cornering back off the edge of the triangle. Mm. That, that does make it significantly faster. Because otherwise I have to deal with this laser, which is undoubtedly going to kill me if I let it pass. Because it's very hard to uh, pass over the laser while you're trying to jump over that same platform and you and the laser are moving in the same direction. Right. So, I'm trying this now. No, I keep getting sniped the laser by the aforementioned cycle every time. Hmm. What else can I say about this one? Uh, I think if you can get that door. cycle, it's a pretty easy top 20. Yeah, I just got seven. Okay. Yeah. If you if you get if you get before that laser, then it's basically guaranteed top ten. I think. I got eleventh with it. Okay, that's nice. I can see. Yeah. Uh, see, yeah, it's. I also noticed that you can one way glitch on the bottom of this level. Oh yeah, <laughs> I don't think it's I, useful I don't... for anything, but it's it's fun yeah. to know. I'd be, I'm wondering if you could use that on the left side to get back up to the platform by passing up at the same time the laser does. But that doesn't seem viably possible. Right. Might be if somebody just does some crazy corner tech or something. Because I've seen people do nuts things with that before. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. Also, it's another one of those challenges where the easy challenge is the main one. Right. I am a fan of when they do that. Yeah, they they often do that when the uh, uh, the actual challenge is much, much harder. So they just stow it away somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I think that it's a nice reminder, I think, that basically all of the hardest stuff in this game is optional, and you should feel no obligation to do it if you're struggling with it too much. <laughs> I'm Indian for illiterates. Anyways. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, let's, uh... I'm gonna move on to Max Float. I feel right. like this one was also pretty memorable, especially since you can literally jump over... You are... For one of the challenges, you find out that you can actually jump over a mine in a hallway like that. Another thing is jumping over the toggle mine ridden uh, platform in the middle, right. right onto the exit, and finding out that you don't die by fall damage. Yes. Also, cornering instead of falling onto the, a side of a surf, uh, wall jumping to save yourself or sliding on a side of a surface. That's very useful for high scoring in this level. You yeah. can just corner jump to avoid all fall damage instead. I think this level has and... a lot going on, technically speaking, in terms of requiring you to be smart about how you play the game. Yeah, also, uh, this is, I think, the only level where you can see yourself trapping a shove thump behind a C-switch. Oh, yeah. 
I have not seen another level where I can do this. And you have a very narrow gap to jump on the side of the shove thump instead to reach for the door when you're stuck down below. Or, sorry, reach for the door switch when you're stuck on the door area. You can yeah. do that instead, and it'll get you that reach you need in order to reach the door switch without touching on the mine platform, or the toggle mine platform, I mean. Right. There's a lot of really narrow but really clever things in this level, and I think the strange part, the strangest part of this level is the toggle mine next to the gold, right under the one where you have to jump over the toggle mine. Yeah. That one feels out of place, but oddly welcome, because it's right beside the one thing that's probably going to kill you in this level. <laughs> yep. So it, it just feels like, okay, that makes sense as a challenge, but it feels like everything in this level is completely different. Nothing in this level really has a theme. It, it, it just sort of... It's a lot of concepts stuck together, and I I like that. It makes it it makes it stand out to me. Yeah, I think when I first played the game, I wasn't crazy about this level just because I, I mean, I found getting the uh, that one toggle next to the gold really hard, uh, and not very fun. But as I've gotten better, this level's grown on me a lot. This is. I think one of those fun kind of, like, sandbox levels where there's uh, a lot of interesting places to move around, um, a lot of interesting jumps you can get, things you can dodge. And speaking of C++, when you're trying to get onto that low, uh, on the side of the toggle mine platform, you're faced with the first challenge of actually figuring out how to get everything and get off of it. Yeah. Do you choose to get do you choose to get on top of the toggle mine platform or do you choose to actually wall jump all the way back? Because both are actually viable options depending on where the rocket is for you because that can easily kill you at any instant. Right. Uh <laughs> If you don't know how to manage rockets, which at this point in the game, you probably don't, it definitely steps up the game. As well as the fact that the strangely placed toggle mine is sort of a hint as to something might be off about the game and ch secret challenges might exist. Or like the idea that there's a reason why there's a random toggle mine wedged between a rocket and gold. Yeah. Just, it's there. The game has a lot of hints like that throughout that I really enjoy, where if you're not familiar with challenges, you have to say, like, did, did the level designers know what they're doing? Did they did they proofread this? And then you're like, oh, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> and you go back and you appreciate the little silly details like that, and that's a lot of the game to me. Yeah. What else is there I can discuss? There's two toggle mines, sorry, not two, uh, there's two regular mines beside you at the start, which is really weird. There's, this the starting room looks really weird in general. There's just a little hole in each wall where you can't jump. Right. But mines are, mines are included there for some reason. Is it so that you just jump up to it and wall jump and that's it? I don't understand the inclusion of that. Actually, I think I really like... I don't know about the holes in the wall, but I like starting with mines on either side of you. Just because <laughs> the name of the level is Max Float, which is, you know, one of MetaNet's many references to computer terms. Yeah, but, I got that one. But having a level that... It's obvious you need to start by jumping. Like, there, there's not really anywhere else to go but up. 
At least that one was immediately made obvious by the fact that, that it's a downward facing chamber, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Next, there's the gold room on the top left. That right. one's just... That's another thing that feels really out of place with this level, but just ends up making it feel so much better. Uh, reason being, it's a gold collection room. <laughs> yeah. How often, how often do you get that outside of question mark tab? Right. Uh... There's a rocket shoved in there with you, though, so it's not a free gold collection room. It's the... Okay, so you've dealt with collecting that gold that's next to the first rocket. Now collect all this gold that's next to this other rocket. I actually never thought of it that way. That's nice. Yeah, especially since the first rocket has a big open area to work with, and the second rocket is much more closed in. It appears closed in, but in reality, it's quite an open room yeah i'm saying that i'm saying that with a hint of question because when i look at it you know it's still a relatively closed room but you have a lot of room to wall jump instead right which gives you a lot of edge on that rocket wall jumping in general just gives you tons of edge on a rocket oh yeah you Definitely either want to jump over it or just trick it by moving close to the sides of it or In general Just being able to move quickly around it instead of being frozen in a location where it's just slowly moving towards your next location Which is how you get killed by the 99% of the time, right? Either that or just do something stupid while trying to avoid the rocket <laughs> And that's T plus plus, T minus minus. Okay. Challenges are redone. I think that's everything I have to cover for this. Yeah, I think so too. Oh yeah, there's also the awkward section on the right, and the inclusion of a way under and over that floating piece. Right. But that's about it. I like the way under the floaty piece because it gives you an opportunity to get an easy corner jump on that lower platform on the left. Oh yeah, also there's a one by one block on the side. That almost never occurs in the game, just the one single floating block. Yeah, usually you only see those in levels that are kind of supposed to look pixelated. But That's not much there. other than that. So yeah, in conclusion, this level's very inconsistent with how it wants to behave. <laughs> yeah, but it it works. I think it really works. It works. It really worked for it. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's good. Last level in the episode. Um. Mm -hmm. You said it was one in ten million, right? Uh, that's that's yeah, six, six zeros. That's six zeros between the. It should be six zeros between the decimal yeah. and one. Okay. This level, uh, I'm not gonna lie, the first time I encountered this, I just grabbed the switch and left. I think I <laughs> probably did too. Uh, I knew that when I was high scoring this, I was going to take forever. Sorry, not high scoring, just getting the gold. Not high oh, scoring. Yeah. <laughs> when I was getting the gold, I, this was just gonna take me forever. And, Wow. Before, I thought I would only get one chance every time I hit this toggle mine. Now, I'm going between the toggle mine and the mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really funny how things change like that. Yeah. You, you go from depending on the game to literally abusing it. I love how as you get better at this game, routing options can just open up in levels that already seemed pretty simple. It just seems very straightforward. There's no other way to do it. And then suddenly, oh, I just did G plus plus T minus minus. Right. <laughs> By the way, that that wasn't that wasn't a fake exclamation. I literally just did that. Oh, awesome. <laughs> uh. Okay. 
as for this level, the gold blocks on the top that, that's just out of your reach kind of gives you that hint that yes, you do need to use those walls, and yes, you need to go through that streaming, blasting bits of mini drones everywhere that are constantly bouncing up and down that were already hard to avoid. But now you know. Wait, hang a second. There must be points that at some point they synchronize, and all of a sudden it's really easy to just cut through everything. Right. And then you realize that the level really isn't difficult at all. If you just go for the first wall jump right at the beginning of the level, and then right over to the second wall jump, then all of a sudden, you've already cleared most of the level, and that felt like nothing. Yeah. It always seems just, like if a meta net level is giving you a ton of trouble because you need to be like more precise than you have been, it's a sign that you're doing something wrong. And I think and this, this is case, a good example of that. You just need to be faster, and all of a sudden everything works. Right. Uh... What else can I say? Oh yeah, the, uh, the G minus minus on this is completely uninteresting. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you jump over one block, you grab the switch, and then you jump over the same block, and you're done. That's it. Yeah, this definitely feels like one of those challenges that they put in because they thought they needed to have a challenge. I think G minus minus C plus plus would have at least gone the extra mile and much more difficult while being interesting and possible at the same time. Except, you know, there's that Yeah, like, if they made that possible, it would be a more interesting challenge. At least you'd have to go across the entire thing. Yeah. Then again, it's always nice to have a break. Very true. Not every Especially challenge in, needs to be non plus plus. Especially after beating a level like this that's supposed to be very difficult the first time you go through it. Just getting a challenge that's really easy is a good contrast. Yeah, very true. And, yeah, it's just go through it, dodge it while getting the top one first, and then the right top one, and then you get the rest of the gold, and then you're done. It's deceptively short. You notice that it doesn't even take up most of the screen size. Right. Also, what's up with the starting area? Why is there so much space to the left of the door? Yeah, I don't know. Some aesthetic choice, I would guess. It looks like it, but I don't understand why. Uh, it feels like it's supposed to re resemble some sort of object. But it doesn't. Right. Kind of looks like a... It, it's a it's a it's a handle like a frying pan handle that's being connected to uh, the grill that is what makes it non plus plus and <laughs> other drone levels like that. Yeah, it's uh, what we call the drone frying plan uh, pan. <laughs> right. One thing I wonder about with the title, um, did you ever play Happy Wheels? <laughs> did, you ever, did you ever see all those custom levels you are Chuck Norris. that have you are the Chuck Norris. <laughs> that have the like ninety nine point nine 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 percent impossible or whatever? I wonder if this title is a reference to that. I I feel like that's a reference to most of the user levels of this game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, every time I see just the level where somebody spams enemies in a box and just titles impossible level and then proceeds to have someone just run across the entire level effortlessly <laughs> and just beat it, it's like, Jesus Christ, man, did you even play test this? Right. Of course not. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh my God, the attempts that I have on... Probability 1 in 10 million and Coffin... No, not Coffin Nails. Uh, light Timer are the exact... Oh, wow. They took me the same amount of time, which really goes to show. Back then, I struggled on this level, and now I struggle on that level for a completely different reason. 
Oh, also, Jay is uh, zeroth on the last level, so uh, that's a hacked score, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a hacked score. Yeah, if you take Jay out of the equation, then Eddie has four of the zeroths on this episode, and Borland has the fifth. Borland has the last one. And Borland has and the like, episode zeroth, I think. Yeah. And Eddie missed this, uh, Eddie missed number one by a single frame, and I'm guessing the only reason he didn't try to take that back is because there's a hacked score. <laughs> yeah, probably. God, when are we gonna do something about this? Oh, that's always the question, isn't it? That's always the question. We can report levels, but we can't report scores. Right. And we can, we can tell MetaNet about it, and I do believe that they genuinely feel bad, but but is anything ever going to happen? Of course they do. I mean, it, cheating in, on your own video game, of course they're going to feel bad about that, but how much can they actually do in the database? I mean, it took two years for name changes to be implemented. Right. Um, which, by the way, I super appreciate. Thank you for that. Yeah. Whoever is behind the databases, seriously, thank you. Uh, because now I can finally scroll through my uh, newest tab and see unbeatable Dr. Nim. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, I think he changed his name back, but still, that was that was a really funny moment for me. Uh, just yeah. seeing that username for the first time, I'm like, man, you were asking for people to take you. It did throw me off the first time I started seeing Slomac around. And I thought, like, oh, yeah. oh, geez, who's this guy who suddenly has a bunch of zeroths in the game? Oh, yeah, this guy's got all of the zeroths. Man, who is... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, do we have a new this... hacker? Uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah, because this guy's going hard. <laughs> <laughs> but nope, it's just good old Borlin. Yeah. That's the entire episode. Uh, this is this is a good episode, I think. It's mm -hmm. fun. And let's see, doing a little bit of math in my head, I can see that for the episode high score, we have a 24 second spread. 26 second spread. Yes. 26.4. Yep. Which is, I think, compared to most episodes, relatively high. It feels relatively high. What are the top 20 IL spreads like? Are there any in here that, like... Oh, yeah, Max Float has, like, a 10-second spread there. I'd imagine it's a very uh, free-flowing level. Yeah. Uh... That's the episode. We did it. That was a very that was a very fun episode. I feel like it had some memorable levels. It had some it had a very devious challenge. Yeah, and... I think even Shots Fired, which was not a very memorable level for me, is still a fun one. Oh yeah, that that's definitely a fun one. That one felt sort of memorable, maybe just because I would keep running into it every time I tried to no death the level because of probability. Oh, no. <laughs> it happened several times. Uh, I think even Coffin Nails, which was the one I was initially thinking I didn't like very much, that grew on me as you talked about it. Mm -hmm. Also, it's just fun to do little hops on that one. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, good episode overall. Thank you. Thank you, Eki, for uh, coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. And uh, closing message: please fix hardcore. Please, please, Metanet, please do that. Please, please fix hardcore. I'm sure MetaNet is listening to this podcast right now. Please, <laughs> please. All right. Uh, thank you.